Hello everyone and welcome to our latest tutorial and this one, this one is super simple. So it's taking your simple line drawing, transferring that from your line drawing into a photo real image, just using Photoshop and some images with some very simple techniques that I'm going to be guiding you along the way. So I hope you guys really like this one. It's something super exciting and I'm really happy to be showing you and having a bit of fun with it as well. So as you guys know, one of the first things we start off with, what is it? What is it? I hear that mood board. That's it. If you guess mood board, that's exactly it. So mood board is kind of your roadmap on how to start this out. So this is basically a mood board uh, of ideas and collections. We have some references. We have various references from Fernando Guerra. We have some of our own work on the right and we have some of Mir's beautiful images. We all know Mir and we love them. They do a great job. And also on the top left, we have some photography of our photo packs. Shameless plug on the top <laughs> left. So this is basically the, the beginning and the way to begin and kind of get your ideas in uh, the right place. So we start up by loading our model getting our model and I kind of already had an idea so I knew what I was doing so I loaded up the model exported a very simple uh, a very simple image from SketchUp and I started working and now one of the first things you want to do and one of the first steps is separate out by layers your materials so I've used like the the various different styles so that I could separate it out a little quicker and easier with the one tool and these then are formed into a layer and this layer that's masked and this group that's masked is kind of going to have the concrete it's going to have the back wall it's going to have the pool it's going to have the breeze soleil so the various elements that compose it So now starts the absolute fun. So this is where I kind of start bringing in photography. Now I'm kind of using the same family. This is a very important tip. Use the same family of photography. So I've got all these photographs that are kind of taken uh, from the same place, similar sky, similar mood that I can kind of bring together. Now I'm letting the photos do the hard work for me. They're doing the heavy lifting. Like I said, you don't need to really draw for this one. I'm just letting the photography, and this is kind of my initial sketch that I'm using. You can use the perspective grid, and I'll show you in a bit how to use that perspective grid. But initially, what we want to do is kind of let the photos do the hard work for us. And you'll see that very quickly, I'm kind of arriving at more or less what will be the final image. So I already know more or less how this foreground, how this midground, and how this background is going to work. And you'll notice the Fernando Garra influence from our mood board in that sky. That's not necessarily what we went with in the end. But again, it's a process of evolving. Now, it's very simple. Uh, elements that we're using. So we're using lasso tool, we're kind of lassoing, we're bringing it together, we're extending the crop. It's all about playing in the beginning. So again, I can, when, when we have artists, when we're discussing new artists, especially in the studio, I'm always telling them, it's all about kind of sending, setting your mind free, uh, not looking at uh, preconceived notions. And this is the great thing about photography, especially. And even in design, if you're an architect, if you're a student and you're designing, and you're using um, these photographs, most times, if you have an idea where this is and use some photographs, you start binding them together and you start saying, wait a minute, this could look really interesting. And of course, you have a, um, you have a logic that you have to follow. So you have to follow logic. So if, you know, this is more or less a tropical area, uh, I kind of changed it in the end. I didn't do it Lisbon. I did more or less a bit of the tropics and you'll see me going back and forward a little bit with the, the photo packs. But if you're doing something like this, you want it to become a family. So images have to relate to each other. I'm not going to put any of our snow photo packs here. It just wouldn't work. And also these design notions I, I've, I've accumulated a long time and that you accumulate with time uh, that tell me, okay, um, what would make sense in this design language that's that's come from this kind of Mies van der Rohe design. Now that I think it's more or less working and we've defined more or less our background and foreground and midground, start to look into what we talked about. Those 
separation of materials and elements. So again, because this is a study, I mean, you saw that first uh, kind of um, stone wall didn't really work, and then we move into concrete. It's all about testing out. So I've set these to multiply you, you just so we can pick up that shadow. But then never forget we're working on something so you can always kind of think about your composition and think how things are working, especially if you're a student. You're, you're really looking to, to test out things, to really look what works best. And as your idea is kind of fluctuating, that's what visualization is, right? It's kind of transmitting your idea. So your idea is going to fluctuate and it's going to evolve. So I'm experimenting with different elements. And these elements, if I was designing this, this would be great because it's kind of a back and forward process of using visualization to design. So again, very basic techniques, but it's all in this family of images and using the simple techniques to compose and making the photos work for you. So you'll see that I'm testing out multiply different modes. I'm probably testing out colors, seeing how this works. And this is the main idea. Now you notice that this top element that I've put in there, this brie soleil isn't really working. And one of the main motives for that is the perspective lines. Now, one of the techniques I use is to just use a grid brush. Now, as you can see, I've just created a new layer and I've just basically control T and I'm transforming and distorting it so that all these horizontal faces are all leading to a focal point. And that focal point is all for these faces on the right. And then we have these these faces in front. So this is a two point perspective because we've got a focal point on the left and a focal point on the right. So I just double click once I've got my um, left focal point and that's the red one. And then I double click and just make the the next focal point a uh, blue color. Now, as you can see, there's a slight shift. So you can see that those verticals on the, uh, those horizontals on the concrete wall are just slightly more inclined than the ones at the back. And this is where I try and kind of get this Brie Soleil to match up. Now, it didn't quite work. And I found that even though if I'm trying to kind of manipulate things, it doesn't really work. And also I'm trying to look in the foreground, trying to look at this plant. Now this plant is just bashed in. Again, it's just to kind of see if these elements work. And this also gives me some indication on the grass elements, if those work, and any other elements in the sequence. So another thing I realize is it'd be good to have this shadow in the foreground. So again, use photography, just a basic extraction with your channels and just contrasting that and extracting it and then selecting that and just curving it down, which you'll see what I've done. You can slow this down again. It's kind of a run through of everything because these are basic techniques. So you should kind of understand a little bit of Photoshop. It's more to get things going. So you see how that complements that foreground and how that kind of gives that depth. So I was reading it as if we were, I don't know, it just didn't work right. And this kind of helps separate the elements. As I basically built up the scene, you can see that I kind of do these stops and these stops are kind of reflecting on all the photo bashing that I've done and looking at and see how it's connecting. So seeing how these various elements are not going together. So I, I start to also get ideas. So the water in the background, I start to understand that I should have some ivy, um, just small ideas. And I do a self critique that really helps me get ahead. And this reflection is extremely important. And now that I've got kind of my basic uh, idea and that I understand, I start to think, okay, maybe it's time to work a little bit more on the details. So I start masking out. And again, very simple masking. The maximum I'm doing here, I'm not even going into all these, uh, you know, uh, more extreme techniques. It's very simple. One tool onto the blues in the tree, which are very re easy to rub out. Also that left side that we had there in that kind of kiosk type setting. And just basically with a very hard brush, just you know, just scrapping out the elements that we don't need. So I picked this up once again, and you'll notice a couple things have changed. So I thought that, you know, let's change this guy. Let's liven this up a little bit. Let's try something different. Uh, so I've gone into my photo packs and again, the family of photos. So as you can see, this kind of relates as I have the palms, I have this tropical vegetation. And at a certain point, I start to feel that the image starts to actually go in a more tropical way. And now it brings another thing where I start to look at 
remember what I said about family of photos and about having things that make sense together. So that tree didn't really make sense. It seems like a Mediterranean tree. So I decided to go uh, for a more for a more tropical tree. So a tree that could be identified. Now I'm not a landscape architect, so please forgive me if this is not from the tropics. It kind of looked like it. I was grabbed from Mr. Cutout, and it's, it's a really good tree. I actually love it. It's got such a nice composition to it. And then I just start thinking, well, you know, maybe I can get away with this. You know, let's just bind the two together. So I color balance it to match it up. I had a color balance um, layer, and then I had a levels to it so that I can get it going. And then you'll see that bottom bit, I just basically duplicate it and attach it and I set it to screen. I just try and kind of rub in that um, that top area with, that you saw that has that little bit of light and I set it to screen mode. Now, as you can see, I've also started to work into this background and, and this kind of hides. Again, sometimes you just have to use the photos to your advantage. So if you wanna hide that, just hide it. Um, it it's, it's just a way of, of really getting it to work well. I continue to make my way throughout the image. So now I'm thinking about levels. You know, I've added a basic gray, just a few levels and color balance. Now I'm thinking about this overlay layer, which I just paint with a soft brush to bring out that contrast in that center bit. So I directed and focused to that center. Um, then I start looking, hey, let's add some interest. So I create this caustic areas just with the caustics um, image set to screen mode and I've kind of that gives the impression that there's a pool there that's emitting water right and it really works well the next step is then to rub out those things so we start refining remember we don't zoom in in the beginning so then we start to zoom in as you can see the layer for the brie soleil uh, I've called it something else but basically I'm just rubbing into it so we don't get those black lines, um, that, those white lines, which are basically my selection without the black lines. And that just helps. I do this all over just to get away with it. This is done at, I think, 4,000 pixels. So in the end, I'm going to output at 2,000. So when I crunch everything together, it will all come through a little better and it won't show up so much. Now, th again, these are just basic details. Again, correction of of the grass and just those little things that are throwing me off. Again, this was meant to be something really quick. So I'm not gonna delve into it and try and get every single aspect right. I mean, you're in uni, if you're working on this, in, in architecture, generally, you never have time. Time is of the essence. So you have to get things done quickly. So again, just a little bit of drop shadow. Using these principles that I've shown you, um, like drop shadow, brushing in the grass with a, um, a grass brush to create that boundary around the, um, around the stones. And that's the way that you can get away quite quickly with a lot of work. And again, just small refine. I could refine all day but the majority is there. So I found the stone image, again from photo packs, the, some, some photos I've taken, uh, and I thought, well, let's add some interest to this wall. You know, it, it's not looking like it's uh, connecting with that back wall, and it looks like it needs a little more detail. Again, I'm not thinking too much about the design here. It's a very basic design, and it's more trying to use the elements that I have at my disposal to try and design. Now I've set that to, to overlay, and I, again, this is not, it's not set in stone that it has to be overlay. If you find screen works, if you find multiply works better for you, use it. Don't be afraid. There's no 100% uh, set in stone technique. I find that overlay works well in this type of circumstance. It might not work in others. So I've masked that out and I'm trying to see, I'm trying to actually find that left face, but then I find that it doesn't work. So I, I said, wait, wait a minute, let's do like this inset of stone, like this feature wall. And it's got this little, um, this little gap around it that accentuates it. And again, this is kind of like they've taken over this old wall that was there and they've integrated this. Uh, it was a basic idea. So just an idea to, to spice it up and add a little more diversity. And again, that, that back and forth of design and visualization and complementing. So again, now just looking to those final details, looking around, what can I better? What I'm not too happy with. Now again, this hasn't been done to an extreme level. So it's it's been done to to get it done, to to show you a basic form of how you can just use images. 
and how you can use these without even rendering, uh, which is the great bit because, you know, Photoshop is a load of fun. And as you see now, we're reaching the final bit and we've added a, a few final things. So the IV, the IV on the second wall that we think might work well, just giving it that, that back and forth. So just using a brush to kind of brush out a little bit of it so we get more of that form that's working a little bit better. And yeah, I mean, I think we changed the, the poofs on the left to a little more of that blue hue that I think fits really well. And then we're just looking at small items and kind of deliberating, okay, how's it looking? Changing out those little things. So we had a little bit more of the, that detail in that blue. Again, I suggest you check out our color tutorial because it really helps you understand why we do these small changes and why they're so important and how colors work. So we reached the end of our tutorial. So we've gone from our line tool drawing and just through simple textures using the most simple things, we go into this final picture. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, from all the team, a big thank you. The team are really cool as well. They're always helping out. Stay tuned because we have some really cool stuff coming up. You can grab this, um, you can grab this PSD and support us from our Arcanine Learn website and our Gumroad. It'd be really cool. It helps us keep creating stuff and finding that time to keep offering you guys more and more stuff. Uh, for now, don't forget to hit subscribe and remember, do it in post. And I hope you've enjoyed this for me and all the team. A big thank you. And check out some of the work from our user gallery from people who've used our tutorials to create some awesome stuff. Now, this is like, Awesome. So I'm just so happy when we see this come in and we're like, wow, that looks like it's, it's come out from our office. So I hope you've enjoyed this. This is Pedro from Arky9 and Arky9 Learn. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.